Hi, this is Andrew Klein. Uh, today's video is going to take a look at a new feature in ZBrush 4R2 called DynaMesh, which allows you to essentially insert objects and blend them together and also create whole new parts of your mesh without really destroying your topology. Uh, essentially what it does is it creates new topology under your surface, which is prime for sculpting, giving you the ability to retopologize your surface afterwards. So what I have here is this head that I created in a previous version of ZBrush. Uh, I actually created this using Z-Spheres. But in fact, you could probably even recreate this uh, with a DynaMesh sphere, which I'll take a look at at the end of this tutorial. Um, but uh, with this completed head, what I first want to do is I want to add some new elements onto it. Um, specifically, I want to start off by adding in some horns. Uh, I'm going to do this by switching to a new 3D primitive, uh, such as a Spherender 3D. And uh, let me just turn on polyframe so you can see this. Uh, I'm going to make a single horn out of this Spherender and then combine it to that head in a second. Uh, under the Initialize subpalette, I'm going to give this some more V-Divide subdivisions, uh, so it has some more vertical divisions. And then under the Deformation subpalette, I am going to up the size in the z-axis until all of those faces become uh, roughly square in size. Uh, now that I have this, uh, let me give this one division so it's a little bit smoother. Uh, then what I want to do is I want to give this a bit of a taper. Uh, so let's first try and taper this in the y-axis. That's going to kind of flatten it on one side a bit. And I just want a little bit here so this is asymmetrical. This is going to allow you to be able to see the horn changes I'm going to make in a second. Uh, then let's try twisting this. And uh, I'm going to do a twist in the z-axis here to kind of make this uh, spiral shape. There we go. Um, now, finally, let's take the smooth bend uh, modifier and give this a little bit of a curl. Let's actually try a little bit more than that. There we go. So I'm going to use this and sort of insert this as a horn onto my already existing character. Uh, to do that, I'll switch back to my final head, sort of draw it out and place it on the screen. Uh, I'm also going to open the geometry uh, subpalette for this. And you'll see the DynaMesh options are down here near the bottom. To get this working correctly, uh, one of the things that has to happen is your mesh really can't have any lower subdivision levels. There's two ways to do this. Uh, one, you can click the new freeze subdivision levels button, but this just kind of sends you back to your lowest uh, low poly, which isn't really going to give you good results when you're done in this case. Uh, instead, what I'm going to do is... Um, just pretty much delete my lower resolution levels here. Uh, so I've removed those out. Uh, I am going to have to retopologize this mesh when I'm done to make it usable for animation purposes. But uh, I really pretty much need to get rid of those division levels to be able to add in my extra meshes. So to utilize DynaMesh uh, and add in a new mesh, uh, I'm going to switch my brush to the mesh insert dot brush. That is hotkey MI on the keyboard when you're in the brush palette. So you'll see here I hit M just to limit my brushes to the M brushes so I could find this. To choose the type of mesh I want to insert with this, the uh, sphere under horn that I had made, uh, I need to go into the brush uh, palette and under modifiers I want to choose mesh insert preview. Uh, this is going to allow me to select the mesh that I want to draw out. So as you see here, I pretty much uh, select that horn and it shows up as my mesh. Now I can just draw this out onto the model and you'll see there it is. Now if you don't like the way that these horns look, you can use your transpose tool. Uh, in this case, I'm going to try rotating a bit. Um, let's get the move function and kind of move it up a bit higher on the head. And there we go. I pretty much like that placement. So now I've got these horns drawn in. You'll see the rest of my model is masked out. That's a feature of the mesh insert brush. What I'm going to do here is uh, I am going to turn on DynaMesh. Once I unmask my surface, 
the DynaMesh function is going to allow me to blend these two models together. Right now you can see that these are two completely separate models. When I zoom in and look at their wireframe, one is yellow, one is green. Um, but if I zoom out and then hold down control to release my mask, then hit DynaMesh, it's going to combine these two into one new model. And you can see the topology has changed accordingly. Now, my mesh is pretty low resolution here. It didn't really hold all of my detail. And that's because here my resolution, my DynaMesh resolution is uh, 128, which is pretty low. So I'm just going to set my resolution to something higher. Uh, let's try like 512 for right now. And I will hit DynaMesh again. And there's my new blended surface. When I look at the wireframe, it's completely clean. If I was to choose a brush like the clay brush, you'll now notice I can sculpt right over that surface. And there you go. I've blended two models together. Now that's not all. There are a couple more really cool features with uh, DynaMesh that sort of gives you the availability uh, to remesh your surface. Uh, I'm going to turn DynaMesh off temporarily. And uh, what I'm going to do is get another new brush uh, called the Curve Tri Fill Brush. Now, the Curve Tri Fill Brush kind of works like this. It's like a uh, magnetic lasso tool inside of Photoshop, if you want to kind of think of it this way. Uh, what I can just do is draw out curve shapes, and it will essentially create new meshes for me. So I'm going to create a couple of these little uh, fins or spikes on the character's head, and uh, using my transpose masking tools I can just click on the meshes. I'm holding down control to try and get my mask correct and sometimes it takes a second or two to actually get the one you want so I control tap on that mesh I can use the center circle of my move tool to get this sort of sunk in and uh, once I've got all of this created the way I want I'm just gonna release my mask and again, I'm going to hit DynaMesh, and this will remesh my surface so that I now have these fins embedded into the head, which, again, I think is also a really cool uh, feature add-on for this. So one more really cool thing to uh, look at here. Uh, I'm going to turn off DynaMesh in this case uh, and get the Move tool, just the standard Move tool. And uh, you'll notice if I pull out the head, I can create some really weirdness here on the brow line. Um, and if I click on polyframe, one of the traditional problems of using a tool like this is it stretches the polygon wireframe of your model, which creates a less desirable sculpting base. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn DynaMesh on while working on this. And uh, let's just take this brow and again sort of accentuate it by pulling it out in sort of this weird way. That's probably a bit too much there. I want to get something that looks doesn't look totally ridiculous. Well, of course, that's probably not going to be possible when doing this. But uh, I've pulled that out, I think, pretty far now. Again, you'll still notice that my wireframe is kind of botched. But when I hold down Control and just sort of drag outside the screen, the same way you're probably used to releasing a mask in previous versions of ZBrush, when I look at my wireframe now, it's actually redrawn my entire mesh on the fly as soon as I do that little Control drag. Uh, and that's, again, just using the DynaMesh features, giving me more resolution where I need it. So I hope you found this uh, look at some of the new features in uh, ZBrush 4R2, hopefully helpful for you. Uh, for more videos, please take a look at kleinmakelearngood.com or youtube.com slash slurpthegillman. Thank you very much.